Hi, I'm Craig Williams, and I want to tell you today about some fantastic creatures. This a group of animals, it's a worm, right? The humble earthworm belongs to a group of animals from the phylum Annelida, or the annelids, and these are the segmented worms. Other segmented worms you might know, things like leeches and polychaetes, which live in the marine environment. But earthworms and, and other little, uh, what we call oligochaetes, live in uh, mostly freshwater and terrestrial environments. They're fantastic for soil, they eat rotting vegetable matter, they recycle material in the soil, and they help to aerate it, which is brilliant. We've got no limbs, so how do they move? And I want to tell you a bit about how they actually get around and do their stuff. How do earthworms move? Well, I'm going to show you with the aid of this water-filled balloon. Now, earthworms have no limbs, as we've previously discussed. So how do they move? Well, they use muscle contraction. It's obvious, isn't it? But muscles can only cause movement when they can contract against something. Now, worms don't have a skeleton uh, like you or I. They don't even have an exoskeleton like uh, the insects and the spiders and so forth. But they do have a hydrostatic skeleton. That's what this is, a fluid filled sack, if you like, or capsule, um, and its true name is the coelom, and which makes worms coelomate. Now some organisms do not have a coelom and they are called acoelomate. Mammals, fish and frogs and um, insects for that matter have a coelom and are coelomates, and it's the coelom that enables this movement. Now, the uh, other really nice thing about um, earthworms is their alternating muscle layers. They have two such muscle layers for locomotion. They have a series of muscles that run along their bodies, along the tudinal muscles, like that, okay, that run lengthways. And when these contract, they make the worm shorter and fatter. Circular muscles run around. The organism and around the coelom and when they contract they make it longer they elongate and so by alternating contractions of longitudinal and circular muscles the earthworm can move forwards now the reason it doesn't just move um, you know stay on the spot getting you know shorter and longer is it because um, there are waves of this uh, mu muscle contraction, which we call peristalsis, uh, which occur in a sequence to enable lengthening of the front and then shortening behind, enabling to move along. And this is further aided by small CT, small um, projectiles, you know, quite small on the front of the worm, which help it to, uh, when it elongates, to anchor on to the surface and move forwards. And this alternating longitudinal and circular muscle layers are something that we see repeated in biology. In fact, um, in, in many of the internal uh, cavities um, of mammals even, of, of humans, we see longitudinal and circular muscle layers responsible for peristalsis. So the movement of, for instance, food and digestive material through the gastrointestinal tract is also caused by alternating contractions of circular and longitudinal muscles. So that's how earthworms move.